529 accounts, also known as Qualified Tuition Plans or QTPs, are a powerful tax advantage investing tool. They allow for tax-free growth and then tax-free withdrawals when used for certain educational expenses. So given the significant tax advantage, I've been asked a few times if it's possible to harness the power of the 529 for non-educational purposes. So if you've already maxed out your 401k and your IRA, you will naturally want to find other tax advantage vehicles. So the question that I get asked is this, can investors use 529 plans as a sort of stealth IRA that allows them to protect even more retirement savings from taxes? Now, the short answer is that you probably don't want to do that. And I'm going to explain exactly why and also explain why I just use the word probably, because there are some scenarios where this might actually make sense. OK, so I'm going to walk through three different scenarios here. In all three, I'm going to use one hundred eighty thousand dollars as the investment amount, because that is what a married couple can super fund a 529 with in 2024. And I'm going to assume 8% annual returns over 18 years. Now there's a link in the notes below to the spreadsheet I used here. If you wanna plug in your own assumptions, go for it. Okay, so scenario number one is investing this $180,000 in a taxable account. Now I'm gonna assume that the 8% annual return is split evenly between distributions and capital gains. I'll assume that dividends are taxed at 15% and interest is taxed at a marginal tax rate of 24%. So that gets a blended tax rate on distributions of 19.5% here. And by the way, I'm assuming no state taxes here. This won't have a huge impact on the analysis, but again, you can use the spreadsheet linked in the notes to fiddle with the assumptions. Okay, so in this scenario, over 18 years, your investment pays about $250,000 in distributions. You owe taxes of about $49,000 there. You'll realize another $250,000 of capital gains, assuming a 15% capital gains tax rate you'll pay about $38,000 in taxes at the end of 18 years. So that means your $180,000 investment grows to about $594,000. Not bad. Okay, so in scenario number two, you elect to super fund a 529 plan with that $180,000. So it returns 8% a year for 18 years and there is zero tax drag. That's one of the benefits of the 529. So at the end of 18 years, your investment has grown to $719,000. Now, if you use the account to pay for qualified educational expenses, the most common example is college tuition, you won't owe any capital gains or other taxes when you withdraw. So that illustrates the power of the 529. You have about $719,000 to pay for college expenses compared to $594,000 in the first example. You've created about $125,000 in wealth. Okay, so let's move on to scenario number three. We're gonna use the 529 plan as this stealth IRA. We're gonna contribute $180,000 into a 529 and then enjoy 18 years of tax-free growth. So the investment grows to $719,000. So far, so good, right? But the problem comes when you try to withdraw from a 529 account for non-qualified expenses. So in this scenario, we are essentially trying to use this account as a way to stuff more money away for retirement and allow it to grow tax-free. So first, you're gonna get hit with a 10% penalty applied to the portion of the account that is attributable to earnings. So in other words, while you are able to withdraw the principal penalty-free, you get hit with a 10% penalty on any accumulated growth. So in this case, $180,000 is our basis, which means that there's about $539,000 attributable to earnings. So 10% of that is the federal penalty of about $54,000. Now note that your state might charge a penalty as well. California, for example, tax on an additional 2.5% penalty for non-qualified 529 withdrawals. Now, in addition to the penalty, you also have to pay taxes on non-qualified withdrawals. And these are taxed as ordinary income. And that stings because ordinary income rates are typically much higher than taxes on qualified dividends or capital gains. So in this example, we had earnings of about $539,000. And then after the $54,000 penalty, we're left with about $485,000. So if we're in the 24% marginal tax bracket, that means another $116,000 in federal income taxes. And again, I'm ignoring state taxes here because they don't have a big impact on the overall analysis. So at the end of the day, after all taxes and penalties, our stealth IRA leaves us with about $549,000. Now, remember that in scenario one, where we just invested in a taxable brokerage account, we ended up with about $594,000. So this route, trying to create a stealth IRA, actually destroys about $45,000 in wealth. If we think about it, this makes sense intuitively. Our stealth IRA plan had one big advantage over the taxable brokerage account. 
tax-free growth for 18 years. But it had two big disadvantages relative to the first scenario. The first is that 10% penalty. And then the second is the higher tax rates in year 18. Rather than paying capital gains taxes of 15%, we paid an ordinary income rate of 24%. So there's the intuitive explanation of why this is probably not a good idea, as well as the math behind it. Now, there is one variable here that can totally change this analysis, and that is the tax rate that you pay on non-qualified 529 withdrawals. The 10% penalty is fixed, but the tax that you pay will depend on your marginal income tax rate. And more specifically, it will depend on the marginal income tax rate of the person who receives the non-qualified distribution. So a distribution from a 529 plan can generally go three places. It can go to the educational institution, most commonly, that's the university that a student attends. It can go to the beneficiary, that's typically the student, or it can go to the account owner, which is typically the parent. Now, you probably see where I'm going with this. If you're going to make non-qualified withdrawals from a 529 account, you'll lower the tax bill due if you make the distribution to a beneficiary in a lower marginal tax bracket. So the bottom line is this. There may be some scenarios where you are essentially able to arbitrage the tax rates and make a 529 work as a stealth IRA. So if, for example, I change my assumed ordinary income tax rate from 24% to 12%, my stealth IRA scenario leaves me with about $607,000, slightly better than the $594,000 I had from just investing in a taxable brokerage account. But even in these scenarios, the benefit is likely to be very small and it may be eliminated completely by state taxes and penalties. In the vast majority of scenarios, the penalties and higher tax rates make this a losing strategy. Okay, I hope you found it helpful to walk through the math behind this question. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we publish new content every week.